Hi there, Neil here. I want to kick this off with a quick story. So, I think late 90s, uh, I was about 10 years old at the time. And Friday nights, if you're around 10 years old, what are you doing on the weekends on a Friday night? Probably perusing your local video rental store. If you guys remember that, taking a walk down Nostalgia Lane. So my parents actually had uh, two video rental stores, kind of like the Blockbusters. They're just called Video Town. And I remember being in there, the year is probably 1999. Uh, I think the Matrix had just come out. So everyone was wearing those goofy Morpheus glasses. And it was just a party in there. Uh, there's balloons everywhere. People are crowded up. And I remember walking around, checking out some of the movies. And I was with both of my parents. My parents were both um, immigrants from India, came to this country with absolutely nothing, and built these stores, these video rental stores. And at the time, in 1999, they were doing very well. Um, so I was with my parents and, uh, my dad looking around very proudly at kind of what you built said, uh, son, this is how local businesses are meant to be. And, uh, my mother at the same time turned to me and wise beyond the years said, uh, these are the golden years. Let's enjoy it while it lasts. And I think we all know what happens next in this story. Redbox came out, Netflix came out and video rental stores went away. Um, and uh, funny side note, my dad actually kept his store, his last store, until 2018. So a very long time. And uh, I was asking him when he closed it if he was sad right as he shut the door. And he just looked at me and said, at least I beat, Blo at least I beat Blockbuster and shut the door. So uh, yeah, a funny side note. Anyways, I bring up the story for two main reasons. Um, one, that there is a perception on what local businesses are in the market, kind of like what my parents have. Heavy overhead, uh, lots of employees, a physical storefront. That's just the old school thinking of what local businesses are. And historically, that's what they've always been. And the second, what my mother had said, which is there, is, there are golden years. There's a right place and the right time for everything. For my parents, the right place, right time that they were in was for video rental stores. They did very well in the late 90s for video rental stores because that was the right place and the right time for it. I think right now in the local market, there is not a better time to disrupt local businesses. It is the right place and the right time for local businesses for a few reasons, which I'm going to go over here. Uh, technology has never made it easier to run a local business remotely, and you, you could take advantages of the world to dominate what we're doing over here. So to quickly introduce myself, my name is Neil Parekh. I am the CEO of Made This Franchise. Made This Franchise is the first US-based franchise focusing on vacation rental cleanings. We also do regular residentials wear, but our niche is on the vacation rental side. So we are a remote concept, a work from anywhere concept. Um, I personally have been traveling the last five years to more than 30 countries while scaling my company. And what we're going to talk about today are some of the key lessons I learned from scaling my company to $2 million per year while traveling the world and how you can do the same. So let's get started. All right. So I'm going to quickly go over a couple things over here. Um, this is me at my corporate job on the left. Uh, I'm going to start off with my story. Then we're going to go into uh, uh, three main points and three kind of takeaways that I've had throughout the years, which hopefully are going to be very helpful to you. So I was working in corporate in LA. I'm from California. Um, starting 2011, when I graduated college, I went straight to work at a venture capital company. So working in finance and love the people I was working with, but it was the most corporate environment you could think of. Um, you know, people walk down the hallways and say, happy hump day. Uh, there's a lot of these things with the corporate environment. So the whole time I kept trying to find different side hustles to work on. And I had two whys for myself. One, I wanted to uh, quit and travel at some point. That was one big thing I wanted to do. And the second part was uh, I wanted to provide financially for my parents. The video rental stores were not doing very well at the time, as you guys know. So I wanted to provide financially for them. That was my motivation for why I started a side hustle. So as I was experimenting with so many different things, I came across a post on Reddit of a guy who started a local cleaning company. He listed the steps to do it. And I thought, you know, what the hell? This is one of many things I'm doing. I'm going to go and try this as well. So I went and uh, started the local cleaning company based on that. And that's how I came up with made this cleaning. Uh, dirty secret, I've stuck at cleaning. I've never done cleaning before, but hey, I started a cleaning company. And um, it was at this time where I started it, made this was growing, but I had in my mind what a local business would be, the perception of what a local business is. I thought at some point I would have to open up an office, have heavy overhead. I'm stuck to one location. I have to hire only in my city. But at the same time, I wanted to travel. So while Made This was kind of growing in the background and doing well, I kept looking at what are 
normal traditional ways of having an online remote business. And many of you who might have gone down this path of experimenting what you could do as kind of a side hustle have probably gone along the same path as I have, which is you look at a blog and the guy is pitching you how to start like an Amazon FBA business, e-commerce, digital marketing, blogging, freelancing, anything. I've tried a million different things because I thought that's what you had to do in order to have a side business where you could actually travel and and not have to be physically in one location. So I was um, at a conference during the process uh, for a company called Flippa. And Flippa is a place where you could, a marketplace where you could buy and sell websites. Anyways, at uh, the conference, just trying to figure out how to get my pet hair vacuum blog up and running, something like that. And I casually mentioned to this guy, I had made this running and he um, said something which gave me an aha moment. He's like, well, if you already have business, why are you even here? And that kind of set off my train of thought. And I asked myself this question, can I run a local business and be location independent? Uh, so I kind of set off on a quest to see if I could accomplish it. And again, this is challenging kind of the beliefs of what a traditional local business is and what it's historically been forever, because up until today, there's never been a time where you could actually run it remotely. So throughout this quest, uh, I learned a few things. One thing I want to talk about first before I get into that um, Biggest lesson number one, you can't steer a parked car. Uh, beware of analysis paralysis. Many of you might be testing a bunch of different things just like I have, and I got stuck for years not taking action on different business ideas. Um, sometimes I feel like you could fall into a trap of learning, absorbing knowledge, buying courses, reading books, talking to people online, um, and you feel like you're being very productive, but the reality is you're not. And that's what I call analysis paralysis. You can't steer a parked car. Just remember that. So the important thing I learned is you should just take imperfect action and improve things as you go. That's the best way to do it. I don't know if any of you guys watched Dragon Ball Z back in the day. I used to. It's kind of like where the main character is powering up and then five episodes later, he's still powering up. That's how I see analysis paralysis. So just be aware of this if you are doing it. Uh, speaking of, you can't steer a parked car. As I got into this and as, as I had that paradigm shift of, can I run a local business remotely? I learned so many things. The main thing is that remote local companies have a huge, a massive competitive advantage at the local level compared to, um, compared to other companies. Uh, here's a few things we're going to talk about is how to bring global marketing tactics down to the local level and why that is your competitive advantage, how to build your global team and how, how to use those first two steps to then dominate a niche of where you're in. So the key concept I'm going to go over first is uh, bringing, a glo bringing global marketing tactics down to the local level. So here is the reality of what I learned. The cleaning industry and most local businesses in general are at least three years behind in terms of digital marketing. So if you're not taking advantage of this fact, you're leaving a ton of money on the table. Now, when I was experimenting what to do, um, I was, you know, trying blogging, e-commerce, drop shipping, everything. At that point, you're competing against the world, meaning you need to be very on top of your marketing tactics in order to beat the competition because you're competing against everyone. With the local market, you're only competing against your local market. And normally they don't know what they're doing in terms of digital marketing. So this is a big takeaway. Just make sure your digital marketing is on point because that's how you're going to dominate the local market. A few stats to throw your way. Uh, almost half of small businesses don't even have a website. And this is as of 2017, so not too long ago. Um, small businesses tend to spend a lot of their money on traditional marketing, like coupon mailers and things like that. Even franchises, uh, competitor franchises uh, spend a large portion of their budgets on mailers, physical mailers. And look, if it has a positive return on investment, that's fine. That works. Uh, my point is a lot of small businesses, even the very professional ones like franchises, aren't doing that much in digital marketing. So if you could level up what you're doing, you're going to absolutely crush the competition. Here's a couple examples of just some local competition in LA uh, that we deal with. Uh, in comparison, here's our website. And I'm, look, I'm not saying it's the best website in the world, but there's some basic things we do to dominate the local market, which is uh, we have web, web capture or web, website conversion funnels. Uh, there's the UI is optimized constantly. There's online booking. There's online chat. On the marketing perspective, we do basic stuff. SEO, AdWords, social media. We have proper email funnels. Just getting the basics set up correctly is going to get you above and beyond what many local companies are doing. And I, I know this isn't specific to global, but my whole point in bringing this up is that if you bring global tactics down to the local level, you're going to absolutely crush the competition. And marketing is one of those areas where you can make a big ROI by doing this. 
Cool. Now that we're on that, I want to talk a bit about how to build your global team and make your competitive advantage. And this part's really cool. So I can spend uh, a little bit of an extended time on this concept here. So the core concept um, we've discussed so far is be a big fish in a small pond. Compete against a local market instead of the entire world. When I was doing all these different side hustles, again, I was competing against the entire world. The reality is you don't need to compete against the entire world to make a lot of money. You really don't. You compete against your local market and still make a lot of money. So might as well be a big fish in a small pond and just crush that small pond. But here, here's the strategy. Use the entire world to compete against your local market. This gives you an unfair advantage. If you have a talent pool from around the world and you bring that to a small local market, you're going to crush the competition because no one else is able to do that. So that's where this becomes very, very powerful, where you could actually build a global team and then bring it to a local market. I'll talk a bit about our company in California and how we're set up. Um, so I think we're across six countries at this point. Um, a lot of it's in Latin America. We have a team in South Africa. We have one person in India. Here's a little bit, a, a few pictures of our team. Uh, there are specific advantages and disadvantages depending on where in the world you're going to go if you decide to build a remote team. So a lot of the cleaners that we end up working with are Hispanic. So we tend to find operations team members in Latin America where there's a Spanish speaking, um, uh, they could, they all speak Spanish and there's a big cultural fit with the cleaners. Uh, also what I found, uh, again, you can't steer a parked car. Once you get into this, you know what, what's available. I found that there's a lot of call centers in Latin America, specifically Honduras, and these support centers have already trained a talent pool. So all we're doing is looking at who comes from these companies and working with them. Uh, there's also weaker currency in Honduras, um, meaning we get a cost efficient labor force. The same is true of other places we find team members in, um, Mexico, Panama, a lot of different places. You could easily find an expat workforce, meaning people who've come from the US or Canada and are living abroad. And they're extremely qualified, US educated, uh, but they're just living abroad. So you could also find that labor pool. <clears throat> you also have a team in South Africa. Um, one thing about Americans, since we service uh, Americans, it's a, it's a California-based company, they love accents. And specifically, the South African accent sounds kind of British sounding. So um, it's so many Americans say, are you from Australia? <laughs> but uh, it, it's, it's kind of a cool thing to be able to use South Africa in order to, uh, for a sales team to talk to our American customers. Uh, the South African currency is technically junk status. So we pay the workers there in the US dollars. They love the stability of it as well. Um, I believe South Africa is also an untapped talent pool. It's not as popular to outsource there versus Southeast Asia, for example, where the Philippines is a very popular area. So it's also an untapped pool. You also might discover some side advantages. So I don't know if you see on the bottom left, uh, the South Africa team wanted to go visit them. They took me to pet some lions, which was kind of scary. I peed my pants a little bit. Uh, they took me to go see elephants. This is some of the team in South Africa when I went to go visit them. It's actually a group of Jehovah's Witnesses um, in the mountains in this small town in South Africa, which is so random. Um, if you think about it, though, Jehovah's Witnesses spend two years doing door-to-door -door sales. They already come train in sales. It's just a great pool and also fantastic uh, people, especially my team over there. Uh, it's funny. I was actually walking around in their town and uh, a very small town and random people are like, hey, like you're Neil, the cleaning company. And I was like... Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's me. And I, I guess the word got around that a group of people in the town were working remotely for a cleaning company based in California. Um, and so people just kind of recognized me. And it, yeah, it's funny. I was, I, I'm popular in a small mountain town in South Africa. Let's put it that way. There's also downsides of remote team members in different countries. Um, here's an example of Pevi, who's one of her team members in, in Honduras. She said, Neil, there's a military tank in front of my house. This is so inconvenient right now. I need to get my kids and get dressed ASAP. I'm so worried about this ticket. So <laughs> there, was a, there was a military coup going on at the same time of operations. So Pevy had to go. Things you normally would not think you have to deal with, we had to deal with. Um, you also have to consider there's different work cultures in different countries in terms of worth ethic or, or just what is normal. Managing time zones for a business. Um, 
the easy answer to that is we have our time zones within Los Angeles and would only find team members who are able to comfortably work in those time zones. So someone's constantly on the road and going, we likely would not work with them, but someone who's stationary in a time zone which works would work with them. You always have to think about Wi-Fi and power issues, meaning for any team members, you always have to ask, do they have a backup power source? Again, things you might not think of uh, in the US or Canada, but you'd have to think about in some countries. I'm going to talk a bit about some keys to making your local business locationless. And look, I went through this process of thinking, how can I make my local company completely remote? Um, and I did that because my end goal was to travel. And I knew that in order to be travel, I had to almost mesh the whole drop shipping model and Amazon FBA model with the local business and see what can be done remotely. Here are four key points you need to consider in order to have a business which can be completely locationless. First, ensure there's limited overhead. Uh, at, in this day and age, you don't need an office space. You could rent a WeWork space, a co-working space if you really want an office space. Um, you could even ship supplies to cleaners if you have that um, via Amazon. There's so many different unique opportunities which are present today, which have never been present in the past, that you absolutely should take advantage of. Limit your overhead. Um, candidly, this is also one thing we have an advantage to other cleaning franchises. Many cleaning franchises we compete with are were created in the 70s or 80s or 90s, where a lot of this just wasn't possible. There was no Amazon where you could mail supplies. There wasn't a way of having Zoom calls with a remote team. So those systems are built in a way where you need a lot more overhead and cost. It's just not necessary anymore. So ensure that your operation can have limited overhead so you can be very nimble. Um, you also need to ensure key management pieces can be done virtually, meaning it, a lot of uh, phone calls and stuff can be done virtually for our business. That's super, super helpful um, just to manage staff on the road. So ensure that can be done virtually. Uh, select a business that is not capital intensive. Do not pick a video rental store, for example. There's ways you can do that. Um, I know many people who actually are able to be on the road while having a physical storefront. I wouldn't recommend it, meaning services is probably the best place you want to be. Um, specifically home services or even commercial where you could send people out to a job where they don't need to report to an office or retail location. Um, I highly recommend this. Have one local manager for as needed, as needed tasks, hiring, onboarding, meeting some of your property managers, having just someone with boots on the ground um, is an underrated aspect. It's tough to be fully remote. So you just need some team member around. Uh, that's it. These are just the four requirements. And uh, look, it's, if you look at a situation like COVID, which happened, you have a lot of companies which had office spaces, which had a lot of overhead, and all of a sudden they went remote. And a lot of people are struggling how to work remotely. Um, you know, there were jokes going around of like, oh, are you even productive at home? We've been doing this for seven years. We were set up this way. And this is the way the world is going is everything's going to be more and more remote. The companies which aren't able to adapt to this are going to be left behind. So the business model going forward, I believe for everyone should be make sure you're able to be remote because that's the way the world is moving anyways. These are some of our can't live without software systems. Uh, we use a variety of software systems, um, but I'm just going to talk about some we use all the time. Slack. Slack is our hub for everything. That's the first place we check in the morning. It's the communication hub. When you have a remote team and you want to manage things remotely, you need an easy way to communicate with your team. So even while on the road, as long as I'm connected to Slack, I'm good because I could check in with the team, see what's happening. Uh, you can even have meetings through Slack, everything. We link everything in Slack via Zapier. Zapier is a software which um, helps connect different software so they can talk to each other. So you could link many notifications to Slack. You could link stuff from your, uh, your booking system, whether it's ZenMade, Launch27, whatever it is, to your CRM. There's so many different things you can do. The key to running things remotely is to automate as much as you can. So please check out Zapier if you don't have that yet. <clears throat> Active Campaign is the CRM we use um, for email marketing. <clears throat> Excuse me. You could use any CRM you want. Um, it doesn't have to be Active Campaign. There's so many out there, but make sure you have an email management CRM. If you do not have that, stop what you're doing right now and go get one right now. That's probably the most important thing you could do is capture the leads and make sure you're sending them emails. Um, lastly, we use G Suite. Um, G Suite is Google suite of products for emails and you know, it has Google Drive and everything like that. So we use Google Meets for all of our meetings. Um, you can use whatever you want. Use Zoom, use Skype, as long as you have that. With a global team, you will have significantly more meetings to make sure you're on the same page. Um, there's different things which you just need to clarify constantly, which might not be able to be done via text. Um, certain meanings of 
words that you think are normal in American culture or implied uh, might not translate to a global team. So having more frequent meetings actually helps. Um, we have a meeting structure from the book uh, Traction, which I have right over here. Uh, Traction is just an entrepreneurial system. It's called an entrepreneur operating system. It's a way to have meetings and make sure we're on the same page and aligned. Uh, if you have a remote team, I'd highly recommend having some sort of system for check-ins and meetings in order to make sure you're all on the same page. Um, with any business, it doesn't have to be remote. You need a set of systems, um, meaning protocols and checklists and what to do when. That is doubly important if you have a remote team um, because you just need to, things to be able to scale without you. Uh, <laughs> key concept number three, do not be a commodity. Pick a goddamn niche and differentiate yourself and simplify. Uh, so what I mean by this is when you look at a local company and pretend you decide, you know what, I'm going to open up a local services company, Neil. Um, I want to have a cleaning company. I want to have anything. Um, I see many people get into this and they pick a niche, let's say cleaning. And they're like, cool, we're cleaning. We do residential homes. We help people save time. And that's, that's our big stick. And we're really good at customer service. That's not enough. Uh, and, and you, you can make a lot of money doing that, but to really differentiate yourself and scale and get to $2 million a year, you need a niche. You need to be different from somebody else. Uh, that could be in a variety of ways. Pretend you pick a local service of cleaning and you want to specialize in COVID cleaning and move in, move out cleaning. We specialize in lots of vacation rentals. And then we build, um, not just the service around it, but also the support system around it. Meaning the onboarding, calendar syncing, a lot of these things we do because we're specialized in a niche. Um, if you do not specialize in a niche and you're a generalist, a lot of these competitive advantages go away because you're just like everyone else out there. So you could have a global team. You could have great marketing tactics. You're spread too thin. The best thing you could do from the beginning is pick a niche and go hard in it. Uh, and I, that's where I see a lot of local businesses failing is they they try to follow the pack, um, which is, I believe, not what you should do. I think now is the best time to pick a niche and really push, push down into it. Uh, so to recap, uh, the competitive advantage that we have, which I believe you can have as well, um, you can bring global marketing tactics down to the local level. You could build a global team in order to compete against a local market. And then here's the key. Once you have those two elements, Pick a local niche and just dominate that niche. You, you're honing down these skills down into a local niche, and then you could absolutely crush the competition. So these are the three things which allowed us to excel. Um, and I feel, I feel humbled and special that, um, you know, at the beginning, I thought having a local business means you can't, you can't do anything remote. Then I also went into the side of having an e-commerce and dropshipping business. And it's kind of cool. I was able to kind of combine the two um, out of necessity, just based off what I wanted to do. And I actually figure out that these are the three things which actually matter. And I hope you're going to be able to use the same to expand your business as well. A couple things like it ain't easy. You're still running a company. You have to manage people. You have to build a culture you have to put out a good product. The main difference is the competition, meaning your local competition and your advantage if you do have a remote company. Uh, the cool thing is once you're able to set up the systems and processes, you're going to be able to manage your company from wherever you want. That doesn't mean you need to travel the world if you don't want to. Um, I traveled quite a bit, but also I really liked being in Los Angeles and staying put and having uh, team meetings and meeting people on site. So that's something you absolutely can do. It just means you have the ability to have whatever type of lifestyle you want. If you want to work from home, you could do that. If you want to work from a coffee shop, you could do that. If you want to work from Venezuela, you could do that as well, as long as there's Wi-Fi. Thank you. Uh, so a couple of things I just want to quickly touch on here. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about Made This Franchise. Now, if you're interested or if you have someone else interested, uh, we'll love to talk to them about this as well. So I'm going to quickly go over some points um, over here on Made This Franchise. So we are the only cleaning franchise specifically targeted right now for the vacation rental community in the US. Um, a lot of the things I talked about earlier are what make us different. We have very new marketing strategy in terms of new age marketing tactics. We have a tech platform, which makes things very seamless for the end customer. And we have a strong core values and a guarantee as well. Um, so how you're supported, how Made This Franchise is supported. And look, I... I spent seven years doing this and I made a ton of mistakes. I probably lost hundreds of thousands of dollars in mistakes. If you could time collapse that and not have to make this mistakes, you're going to be so far ahead. I probably just saved one to two years at least off of what we're doing right now. Um, if I just know these things ahead of time. 
So some ways you're, you're supported. Um, we do training. So there's five day live exclusive owner training. Um, day one, you're, we're going to go over service offerings, build your business plan, your marketing plan, your sales plan, do competitive analysis, uh, set up your software systems, get everything linked through Zapier, like I mentioned, talk about the core values of what makes us different. The next day, we would talk about uh, sales and marketing, doing sales training with our South Africa team, uh, how to manage prospects and make sure you can surprise and delight prospects at all times, marketing one-on-one, and just basic client service procedures that we've learned over so many years of doing this. Uh, day three, more client management, uh, client onboarding communication, how to manage team members, handling complaints, getting referrals, everything around clients. Let's talk about cleaner management, how to conduct proper group interviews, what you should be looking for, how to set things up, what are the stats on what you should look for in terms of how many people attend group interviews, how many actually get hired and onboarded. Uh, we talk about management systems as well as so we're tracking all of that. And the last part, which I think is very exciting, building a remote team. You don't have to have a remote team, but if you do, we have the systems and processes to make sure you're set up for success on that. Uh, so we actually have an operations manual as well, which is, um, I have it over here, is this fat document, uh, 400 pages over here of the Made This Operations Manual. This has every single system we've ever created and perfected and spent years and years of testing. Uh, like I said, buy someone else's mistakes, right? I made tons of mistakes doing this and I've had so many different experiments uh, with what to do and figured out what works and what doesn't work. All of that summarized in the operations manual, which you have full access to as well. You get one-on-one coaching support. So for your first couple of months, there's a launch coach, which helps you get set up. You could help you onboard cleaners, help you set up your company. You do a grand opening procedure. You get 30 minutes of weekly coaching calls with a Francis success coach, unlimited email and phone support as well. So everything we could do to make sure you're set up for success. And look, you're following the blueprint we've created with our niche, our website, our local marketing plan, um, everything that I've already done to scale my company to $2 million in revenue. This is something that's a little bit unique for the first three franchises. You're going to get coaching directly from me. Normally, I don't do coaching. Uh, but for the first three, three franchises, I want to make sure that you guys are set up for success from the beginning. We just launched this franchise program. And I want to make sure whoever signs up has all the support they need. You get direct coaching from me. You also get training with the existing corporate team. So our team member, which is across six different countries, you'll get fully trained by them in all of the systems and processes we use. You also get three days of training and shadowing for your first operations hire. Meaning if you hire someone to be a salesperson, a remote uh, team member to, have, to do cleaner management, you can send them to our team and we'll train them and give them back to you. So that is one offer, which is exclusive just for the first three franchises. Um, website setup and maintenance. You don't need to do any of the tech stuff. Uh, you get a high converting website, which we've already tested. We probably spent twenty dollars to $30,000 just on the website alone. Uh, you don't need to do any tech stuff at all. We do all of that for you. And then we've already tested and tweaked it. Marketing. A lot of the local marketing basics already done for you. SEO, local listing created. We'll set up your social media pages. This is a very unique competitive advantage, an R&D arm and a national marketing fund, which I think franchises have, which you might not have if you're doing this by yourself. Um, as we test out marketing tactics, we could roll it out to everyone, meaning we spend money, test it. If it works, we say, cool, everyone can do it. And everyone does the same thing as well. So you get almost crowdsourced feedback on what is and is not working within our ecosystem. We also have a national marketing fund, which is devoted number of dollars for shared content. We help set up partnerships for you. We do brand marketing. We create awesome videos, which you'll have access to as well for your ads. So shared resources is a huge aspect of being part of a franchise community. Great. And that's it. Um, I hope you had a ton of value from this. If you have any questions at all, please feel to reach out to me and uh, best of luck. Take care.